So in this video, we're going to use LLD discovery rules and actions to find and auto configure all SNMP devices on my internal network, this one here, network two. The rules will scan all the IPs in a range looking for SNMP daemons. And with the response, it will decide which group to put that SNMP daemon into. So there'll be Windows groups or Mac OS X groups or, or Linux groups. And then it'll also assign the appropriate template. And this will be all automatic. So I've set up SNMP daemons on my Raspberry Pi, my Ubuntu and CentOS VMs, my Windows 10 machines and my Mac OS X. And I've verified they all work from the Raspberry Pi because the Raspberry Pi, the proxy, is going to be doing the scanning for SNMP devices. If you don't know how to install SNMP on any of these particular kinds of operating systems, I have links in my resources attached to this video. And to demonstrate that I know that all those SNMP devices are responding, I, I can test it. There's one 140, that's my one of my Windows desktops. There's a 119, that's another Windows desktop. There is a 65, that is my uh, Mac. Ah, oh, there we go, there we go, it's back on. There's my uh, 118, 119, 77, that's one of the, that's the CentOS, and then there's a 78. That's the uh, Ubuntu. So they're all responding. SNMP is listening on all of those devices and my Raspberry Pi is able to actually query those SNMP services. And they're all on my community here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into configuration discovery and create the discovery rule. And that is here, create discovery rule. I'm going to call it SNMP discovery. I'm going to use the proxy, my Raspberry Pi. My proxy is already configured and working and server and the Raspberry Pi are communicating. Okay, so my IP range is between 192.168.1 and 254. I also have on my Raspberry Pi an SNMP daemon running and that's on 127.0.0.1. So here in the IP range I can have multiple IP ranges and this is just an individual IP. Let's just show you that that is working on my local Okay, Raspberry Pi. Okay, so the update interval, one hour. I'm just gonna make it 30 minutes for now. I want it to be a little bit faster. I want it to, I want it to kick off a little bit sooner. Need to do a check. Now the check is gonna be SNMP version two agent, the port 161, the community is my community. And the OID here, can be numerous things. I have installed the SNMP MIBS downloader on my Raspberry Pi, so it's able to use MIBS descriptions. Otherwise, you'll have to use OIDs like that in that format. That will return the system description. But since I have MIBS installed on my Raspberry Pi, I can actually use a MIB description here and just query system description directly. Let me just demonstrate that. Let's use that string on a on another another server on my Ubuntu, and we can see that it still returns a system description for a Linux Ubuntu. In the previous videos, I demonstrated how you can set up using MIBs queries. Let's add that particular rule so it exists now. SNMP version two agent system description. Device uniqueness is IP, host name, DNS name, visible name, host name. All that is just, I'm leaving that default. SNMP discovery, let's add that. It's time now to configure the actions. Okay, so we're gonna create some actions now that will read that, read those SNMP responses and decide what to do with those hosts that it finds. Okay, so here it's gonna be discovery, event source discovery, let's create an action. The first one is going to be called add Linux SNMP host. Okay, so the new condition is going to be discovery rule equals SNMP discovery. Let's add that. Okay, so that exists now. Label A, discovery rule equals SNMP discovery. I'm also going to add another rule. The received value contains 
Linux. Okay, so that check that I set up in Discovery is checking for the system description and that system description can be used inside this action here. New condition, receive value contains Linux. Let's add that. Okay, so SNMP discovery, receive value contains Linux. They both need to be AND. So A and B, we now decide the operations. And that all becomes true. The operations will be, I'm gonna send a message to myself. Admin, I'm gonna send myself an email. Let's add that. Admin, Sabix administrator via email. I'm going to add a host to a group and the group is going to be Linux servers. Let's add that. And I'm going to assign a template. Link to template. That template is going to be operating systems, Linux SNMP version two, select, add. That's all good, let's add that. Send message to users, add to Linux servers, link to templates, template OS Linux version two, that should Auto configure my Ubuntu, my CentOS, and also my Raspbian. So now let's look at the Mac OS X and the Windows 10. Configuration actions. Let's get this one and we'll clone it. Add a Mac OS X SNMP host. The received value to remove that. The receive value should contain the word Darwin. That's uh, that's in the system description of a Mac OS X. So let's add that. And the operations will be add to groups. Mac OS X servers. That's a group I created earlier update and Mac OS X is very similar to Linux so I'm just going to leave the SNMP the Linux SNMP version 2 template because we don't have a specific Mac OS X template for SNMP so let's add that okay so add Linux SNMP add Mac OS X SNMP Linux Darwin Getting an email, Linux servers, OS X. Now to do the Windows. Let's clone that again. Add a Windows SNMP host. The received value should contain Windows. Add. And yes, it's operations. We're going to add it to a my Windows servers group. Let's update, and I'm going to add it. The template is going to be my Windows SNMP version two template. Update. Servers, Windows, let's add that. Okay, so it contains Linux, contains Darwin, contains Windows, Linux, OS X, Windows, Linux, Linux, Windows. Okay, so that's all good. We just have to let that run now. If I go to monitoring discovery, eventually we'll start seeing hosts show up here. And they will then also be added to configuration hosts. So I should expect to see quite a few extra SNMP hosts show up here and they will already be put into the correct group and they will already be assigned the correct template. And if I leave it even longer, I'll have uh, thousands of items running all automatically. So I'm gonna pause the video and we'll come back to that. 
in about an hour's time and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here's an update, about at least half an hour to an hour after I finished setting that up, I can now start to see SNMP requests being sent across the network. I'm using TCP dump to do this. You can see a couple just happened just then. So it's trying out every single IP address it can. And so it's gonna take quite a while before it finishes. I didn't have anything at 70 or 71, but I have one at 78. Found OS boxes and it found Ubuntu 18 VM. These requests are still happening now, so as I record, if I was to look now at the progress of monitoring discovery, okay, so it's found my Mac and it's found my CentOS and my Ubuntu. Okay, so if we go down to configuration hosts, we can see it's already assigned the template to it as well, the template. So we've got some items there already with some triggers already set up, five discovery rules. This is not finished yet, this is still happening. So we'll come back in about another half an hour to an hour's time to look at the progress. Here's an update, all my hosts have been found. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. So there's nothing else on my network, there's an SNMP device. All the hosts have been configured. They're actually still configuring. They're not available just yet, that's all right, because the the discovery rules for each template is actually running now you know give it some time and they will become available and all the items would have been filled in there's only 11 so far you expect to see oh, there'll be over a thousand once this is finished so all the all the, so all the templates have been uh, ch chosen their windows so that's windows snmp version 2 windows that's uh, Linux, Linux, OS boxes are Linux, and a Mac is also a Linux SNMP version too. If we were to look at one of them in more detail, we can see that the uh, SNMP interface has been set up, monitored by proxy Raspberry Pi, and it's also put into discovered hosts. This is all automatic. The macros, I don't have to change anything. It's inherited um, the My Community globally as well, so I didn't have to change anything. I'll come back again in a half an hour to an hour and see how we're going. And to explain why maybe it takes quite a long time to scan is because if you look at the times here, it does about two SNMP requests at a time, so 5836, 5840, then waits like 10 minutes before it does another two, 2731. I did another one like 30 seconds later. It's quite irregular on how it does the SNMP requests in the background. I guess that's all about just using minimal resources. Another thing to note is in my configuration of discovery, the SNMP discovery here, in the IP range, that was the last device found. And that was found after this first range was completed. So that was... You know, if I'd put 127.0.0.1 at the beginning, that would have been the first device found. Time for another update. All the availabilities have switched on now, but it's still not finished. Let's try again in another half an hour. Okay, so that's been running for about two hours, and all my hosts, while it's still happening, the Raspberry Pi hasn't finished creating items yet but there's 262 items on this windows there's 424 items on this windows and there's loads of triggers and graphs the discovery is pretty much found a lot of things now on the linux servers there's 79 82 and on the mac there's 117 50 triggers 13 graphs and it's all pretty good the raspberry pi currently is sending out heaps of snmp requests but still actually running this discovery. I'm just going to adjust this to being maybe one hour now. It's a bit unnecessary. Update. Okay. There's a whole lot of bulk requests going out now. It's loads and loads and loads. It's working quite hard, collecting lots and lots of data for me. So if I was to look at monitoring latest data, say if I looked at one of the hosts, there's just heaps of items there. Look at that. That is the, one of my Windows machines. Let's have a look at the Mac apply. There are loads of Mac items to look at. So let's look at a uh, 
We can also look at the graphs here. I can, so I'm looking at, uh, let's look at the Mac, see what, what information. We've got some data coming through on memory utilization it's behind me on uh, memory i've got cpu there's not much happening on the mac right now let's look at this computer here discovered hosts um, cpu cpu graph looks a little bit more interesting memory okay and uh, ethernet there we go it's all just the beginnings you got the option to also um, disable it after a while if you don't think you want to keep rediscovering SNMP devices on your network. Um, another thing too, if we look at the dashboard, we look at the health here, we can see that that was quite a shock to the system for Zabbix, but just a bit of patience. For example, this Q size about at about 10.30, it all started working and then all of a sudden it just, the Q, became really quite full and then it just you know just figured itself out now it's back to normal again it's just happily running along if your configuration is anything like mine expect Zabbix to be sorting itself out for a few hours while it goes out running all its discovery rules and collecting all that data so it's the four discovery rules there five five discovery rules that was LLD discovery rules and actions to find and configure all SNMP devices on your network.